The hilarious fantasy Korean drama that just started airing in June is making a strong impression. Originally a young woman in her 20s, she unexpectedly transforms into a middle-aged auntie overnight. That day, Mi Jin woke up as usual and sat between her parents. At that moment, Mi Jin was unaware of her changed appearance, only mentioning to her father that she felt strange physically. Her father, thinking she was just nervous about starting work, didn't look at her closely. Then, her father mentioned his back was itchy and asked Mi Jin to scratch it for him. During this interaction, her mother witnessed an unbelievable scene. Taken aback by the sudden change, Mi Jin was confused but didn't grasp the severity of the situation. Her mother urged her father to call the police and then tried calling out to Mi Jin again. Mi Jin thought her parents had learned about her failing the civil service exam and wanted to explain, but her parents didn't give her a chance and even armed themselves to chase her out of the house. While fleeing, Mi Jin accidentally saw her reflection in a mirror. Only at that moment did she realize the drastic change in her appearance. The police and her parents quickly surrounded her again. Mi Jin kept shouting for her mother, trying to explain everything. But from her mother's perspective, the Mi Jin she saw looked even older than herself and couldn't possibly be her daughter. At the police station in front of her parents, Mi Jin stated her name and ID number. Her mother almost collapsed upon hearing it, completely bewildered about what this middle-aged woman was plotting. Initially, her mother thought it was as her father had mentioned, considering it a private matter that the back had a birthmark, but her father strongly denied it, demanding to know who Mi Jin really was. To prove she was still in her 20s, Mi Jin danced in front of the police using her current body and then showed them a photo in her wallet for comparison. Seeing their daughter's wallet with the middle-aged woman deepened the misunderstanding. Her mother suspected that Mi Jin had done something to the real daughter. However, Mi Jin was more devastated than her mother. She had never imagined that encountering a cat the previous night and following it into a well could lead to such a transformation. Eventually, the police concluded Mi Jin was mentally unstable and planned to release her after a warning. They asked for Mi Jin's home address to escort her back, but she had disappeared. The police chased after her, only to find Mi Jin preparing to escape. She hid under a table in a restaurant until sunset when the police finally caught up. Just as they were about to take her back to the station, they realized they had mistaken another person for her. To her surprise, Mi Jin found herself back to her original form when she returned home. Her parents were still discussing the day's events. Mi Jin locked herself in her room, pondering what had happened. She realized that although her appearance might change, her physical and mental energy remained that of a young woman in her 20s. The next morning, as the sunlight streamed into the room, Mi Jin's skin rapidly aged, causing her to scream in terror. Suddenly, she remembered the cat she had encountered the night she fell into the well and had taken to a vet for treatment. Thinking of this, Mi Jin went to the hospital that night to find the cat. The doctor said the cat that Mi Jin was looking for had vanished. At that moment, it was in a warehouse, staring at a missing person poster named Lim Soon. Its appearance and physique had changed. It could no longer fit into the clothes it wore in its youth. With no other choice, Mi Jin secretly slipped into her mother's room and put on her clothes. She thought she was just sick and went to see a doctor trying to explain her situation. However, the doctor suggested she visit a psychiatrist. Hearing that anti-aging injections could make her younger, she went to a cosmetic surgery clinic. Unconvinced, Mi Jin approached a wizard. Just as the wizard was casting a spell, she witnessed herself transforming. After several exhausting days, Mi Jin was worn out and shouted into the sky asking why. Suddenly a banner appeared around her, which she struggled to take down. It read, Has time really just passed by like this? Want to start over? It was pitch dark ahead, but the banner encouraged anyone with passion to take on a challenge, regardless of age, gender, or education, under the middle-aged employment support plan. Mi Jin went to the interview site. Although she now looked like a middle-aged woman, she still appeared young among the job seekers. During the interview, she demonstrated energy and abilities not typical for her age, even proving her bilingual skills in Chinese. A few days later, she confidently checked the interview results and finally found her name at the bottom. Previously, in her 20s, she had failed the civil service exam. Now, with a middle-aged woman's face, she found a job meant for older adults. What strange events await her next? During the interview, she used the name Lim Soon, the long-lost sister of her mother. Because Mi Jin transforms during the day, 
she must leave home early to avoid her parents noticing. Today, her first day at work, was at the local prosecutor's office, where she and four other older adults were responsible for cleaning. Though the job was far from her dream of being a civil servant, she worked energetically. If outsiders saw her, they would be surprised by the physical vigor of a 40-year-old cleaner. Immersed in her own world, Mijin was cleaning prosecutor Gai Ji Wong's office when he suddenly appeared. This wasn't the first time she had seen Gai Ji Wong. On the day she failed the civil service exam, she almost fell victim to a scammer, but was saved by Gie Ji Wong, who later drove her home. That day, Mi Jin mistakenly took some documents, and since then, Gie Ji Wong had been trying to contact her unsuccessfully because she had blocked his number, mistaking him for a scammer. After work, Gie Ji Wong visited a real estate agent, expressing his urgent need to find housing. The agent had a special property available and asked Gie Ji Wong two questions. Are you low on Yang energy? Are you afraid of ghosts? Upon receiving a negative response from Gei Ji Wong, the uncle took him to tour a house. The uncle's friend, Mi Jin's father, seemed to have something to say to Gei Ji Wong, but was stopped by the uncle. Gei Ji Wong wasn't very demanding about the housing and signed the agreement on the spot. Meanwhile, a rejuvenated Mi Jin found her best friend, hoping she would help locate the cat during a live broadcast. Suddenly, Mi Jin mentioned seeing lights on in the haunted house downstairs. It turned out that the uncle who rented the house to Gie Ji Wong was the father of Mi Jin's best friend. Late at night, an image of a woman lying in a pool of blood briefly appeared. Her room was the same room 303 where Gie Ji Wong was staying. Gie Ji Wong woke from a nightmare, hearing the dripping of water in the bathroom, but found nothing upon checking. Later, as he went to get water from the fridge, the bathroom light suddenly flickered. Recalling the questions asked by the uncle during the day, Gie Ji Wong became worried and decided to go for a run until early morning. In the morning, Mi Jin rode her bike to the prosecutor's office, finding a group of female fans gathered, apparently waiting for a male celebrity. Just as she was about to enter the office, she spotted a suspicious man in the distance. Soon after, a celebrity appeared at the entrance of the prosecutor's office. Suddenly, the man in black appeared, and Mi Jin quickly blocked him with a mop. Unexpectedly, the man threw strong acid towards Mi Jin, but she was saved by Gai Ji Wong, causing her heart to flutter, though she seemed to forget her current appearance. While lost in thought, Gai Ji Wong had already gone to the pork store owned by Mi Jin's mother. Mi Jin received a call from her mother saying that a prosecutor named Gai Ji Wong had come looking for her. Hearing his name, Mi Jin was frantic, knowing only Gai Ji Wong knew she had failed her civil service exam. Fearing her mother finding out the truth, she frantically rode her bike home, though the bike wasn't very fast. If she had a car, she could have gotten home immediately. Upon her arrival, Mi Jin's mother questioned Gai Ji Wong. As a mother, seeing her daughter nearly 30 and never having held a man's hand, she couldn't miss the opportunity now that a man had come to their door. By then, Mi Jin had arrived home and quickly hid behind the stairs to change clothes. When she changed, her body transformation time came and Mi Jin returned to her original form. Mi Jin pulled Gai Ji Wong aside to ask if he would tell about what happened on the day of the interview. Gai Ji Wong reassured her, not mentioning anything about workplace scams. During their conversation, Mi Jin's mother was secretly watching from a distance, hoping something would happen. Meanwhile, Mi Jin's father also noticed his daughter, but, unlike her mother, did not want his daughter to be taken away by another man. Gai Ji Wong, returned Mi Jin's job application materials to her. However, when Gai Ji Wong asked for his own documents, Mi Jin remembered she might have burned them while drunk one night. The documents were not completely destroyed, but were sold to a second-hand bookstore. Since Mi Jin had lost the documents herself, she decided to resolve the matter personally, not allowing Gai Ji Wong to refuse. Mi Jin took him to the second-hand bookstore and began searching under Gai Ji Wong's supervision. It was very late, and Mi Jin's father hadn't seen his daughter. He wanted to call her to ask why she hadn't come home yet, but Mi Jin's mother stopped him. Meanwhile, Mi Jin was still searching for documents. Gie Ji Wong was getting impatient. He watched as Mi Jin repeatedly searched the same place and couldn't help but say that those places had already been checked. Mi Jin muttered complaints that he was not helping and was too talkative. After some time, Mi Jin finally found Gie Ji Wong's documents. When she turned to tell him, she found that he had disappeared. A few minutes earlier, 
Gai Ji Wong had received a call from a colleague and rushed to a crime scene. The scene was gruesome, with a body divided into several parts. Based on the clues left, Gai Ji Wong walked to a reservoir. With years of experience, he deduced that the murderer was hiding there. Continuing his search, he indeed found the hiding murderer. The murderer drove off in a car, heading towards Daiho Crossroads. At that time, Mi Jin sent a message saying she was going home and wouldn't wait for him. The route home for Mi Jin passed through that crossroads, coinciding with the murderer's escape route. Realizing this, Gie Ji Wong took a shortcut and chased desperately. Mi Jin was curious about what documents Gie Ji Wong was so urgently searching for. She stood at the crossroads and opened the file. It contained case files for the serial disappearance of women in Daixun district. The most frequent incidents occurred right where Mi Jin was standing. At the same time, the murderer's car also arrived. What will happen next? The documents Mi Jin was holding accidentally slipped out, and one, by chance, flew onto the car's windshield, blocking the murderer's view. Reluctantly, the murderer stopped the car. Unfortunately, the murderer couldn't be seen from outside. Unaware, Mi Jin apologized to the driver and retrieved the document. The murderer suddenly opened the door, startling Mi Jin. During this standoff, Gie Ji Wong finally arrived. He shouted a warning to Li Mi Jin. Seeing the situation turn bad, the murderer quickly closed the car door and sped away down the country road. Gie Ji Wong, realizing he couldn't catch up, decided to escort Mi Jin home. He casually asked if there was anything unusual about the car, mentioning a strange smell. The scene shifts to the anxious parents waiting outside their home for their daughter. When they saw Gie Ji Wong driving her home, they pretended not to notice and quickly ran back to the yard to secretly watch the two. The parents were eager for their daughter to marry, but were disappointed. Gie Ji Wong simply said goodbye and drove away from the alley. The couple felt frustrated that their nearly 30-year-old cabbage had not been stolen yet. Meanwhile, after the killer finished dismembering the body, he suddenly remembered Gai Ji Wong shouting a name, which he then wrote on the wall as his next target. However, due to the similar pronunciation of names in South Korea, he wrote down both Lee Mi Jin and Lim Mi Jin. The next morning, this caused a stir at the prosecutor's office and quickly topped the trending searches on social media. In her 40s, Mi Jin was called into the office and awarded the title of model worker. Additionally, the group of elderly civil servants welcomed a new member, Beck Cheol Q, a bespectacled, well-mannered former hospital director, thus setting him apart in rank. On the other side, a delivery guy brought numerous packages to her best friend's house, including an expensive car, gifts from a celebrity as a thank you for saving his life. But why were they delivered to her best friend? Suddenly, Mi Jin received a call and rushed to her best friend's doorstep. Thinking of the last scolding from her mother, she came up with a sneaky idea. Holding a delivery box in front of her face, she rang her best friend's doorbell. Her best friend, quite careless, welcomed her in without a clear look. Inside, Mi Jin was in agony. She had to recount all her past boyfriend's names to her best friend, who still couldn't believe her. With no other option, Mi Jin entered the password to open the door. From her clothes and family background to her birthday and preferences, Mi Jin explained everything, but her friend remained skeptical. Finally, Mi Jin revealed the truth. She looks different during the day and reverts to her original form at night. Her clever friend immediately dialed Mi Jin's phone, which then rang beside them. To prevent her friend from calling the police, Mi Jin started to make a scene. Just then, Mi Jin hurriedly made her friend sit on the couch because the sun was about to set, and she wanted to prove her identity in person. She urged her friend to record her magical transformation on her phone. As the sunlight faded, 40-something Mi Jin transformed back into her 20s. The shocked friend immediately hid, likely scarred for life. The next day, Mi Jin met with the handsome man to return the valuable items. However, he showed extra care towards her, and they agreed that he would treat her to coffee daily. When the handsome man's drug addiction suddenly flared, he rushed out of his duty post and was spotted by Mi Jin. Like a caring older sister, she gave him a candy to cheer him up, enhancing his fondness for her. Back at the office, Mi Jin and Gaia Ji Wung approached the elevator, and she also gave Gaia Ji Wung a candy. As the workday was ending, Gaia Ji Wung asked his assistant to send documents to the prosecutor. The assistant, a young person, complained about the long hours and heavy workload, 
admitting she would quit if not for the salary. She felt there was no point in working hard, as it wouldn't lead to promotion or a raise. Gaia Ji Wong hoped for a new assistant, but it was a difficult time to find replacements. The deputy prosecutor couldn't immediately find a replacement. However, Gaia Ji Wong didn't care much about that. He was determined to appoint someone new. This made the deputy prosecutor extremely anxious. At that moment, he spotted an old photo of government employees at their induction, and the more he looked at Mi Jin in the photo, the more he liked her. Coupled with her brave act of subduing a thug the day before, he suddenly had a sneaky idea. Meanwhile, there were no clues in the dismemberment case. Forensic analysis suggested that the victim might have been alive during dismemberment, as there were no signs of liver mortis. This reminded him of a similar case from the past, which, unknown to him, involved Gaia Ji Wong's mother. Additionally, his colleagues reviewed surrounding surveillance footage. However, none of the vehicles leaving the city from the evening until early morning matched the description. There was only one road likely leading into a village. His colleague handed Gai Ji Wong photos of several vehicles that entered the village and matched the description, significantly complicating the investigation. As the sun was setting and the police were withdrawing, Gai Ji Wong tried to get some useful information from Mi Jin, but his calls were still being blocked. Just then, he noticed a sedan behind him, very similar to the suspects. He drove after it, but the other driver seemed to notice and accelerated, eventually losing Gai Ji Wong at a narrow bridge. Fortunately, he remembered the car's license plate number. That evening, Gai Ji Wong caught up with Mi Jin on her way home. They planned to chat, but Mi Jin's mother, overhearing, intercepted them with excessive enthusiasm and physically dragged Gai Ji Wong inside. She then signaled her husband to move and seated her daughter next to Gai Ji Wong. Sensing their discomfort, she suggested they talk in Mi Jin's room and locked them in without waiting for their agreement. The parents eavesdropped at the door but couldn't hear anything due to the soundproofing. However, they were so close they nearly conceived a second child. Gi Ji Wong's actual intention was to ask Mi Jin to identify the car driven by the suspect. However, due to poor lighting that night, Mi Jin was unsure. Yet she found the suspect's scent strangely familiar, but couldn't place it. The next morning, Mi Jin transformed and cheerfully went to work. Upon arrival, she was informed by the manager that the deputy prosecutor wanted to see her. That afternoon, she appeared in Gie Ji Wong's office, quickly promoted to an assistant prosecutor. However, her boss was already scheming to dismiss her. After learning about her promotion, Mi Jin had asked her best friend to do her makeup beautifully, but by daylight, her appearance had changed dramatically. Although her friend was prepared, the shock was still overwhelming. Additionally, with the changes in her body, her skin had become very loose, and she didn't know where to start. So, Mi Jin pointed to her proudest feature, her chin, and after two hours of effort, she was very satisfied with her reflection. Her friend didn't understand why she was trying so hard. Mi Jin felt she had been unsuccessful until her 30s, and now, in her 40s, she finally had a chance. She wanted to see how haunting her past pursuits could be. However, fate was not kind, and Gi Ji Wong was depressed to see his new assistant was actually the cleaning lady. The aide suggested simply letting Mi Jin resign on her own. He was confident that then the higher-ups would send someone younger. Gi Ji Wong, after hearing this, remained silent, thereby agreeing to the aide's plan. They both had high hopes. People over 40 were past their prime, less physically capable, and lacking in ability. Even if she tried to persevere, with a firm resolve to make things difficult for her, she would likely resign voluntarily within a week. After discussing with his aide, Gi Ji Wong began their plan. At 10 a.m., he handed Mi Jin a large stack of documents, likely thousands, and instructed they couldn't be scanned but must be printed manually. The aide reminded her to have them organized by noon. Gi Ji Wong, with a glance, praised the aide's cunning. The aide was confident Mi Jin would resign by the day's end. Unexpectedly, Mi Jin typed like a torrential river. She had once been a vehement online debater, honing her skills to handle 10 at a time. Typing 10 words per second was nothing to her, with a record of typing a thousand words a minute with one hand. Her speed left Gai Ji Wong and the aide speechless, unable to believe a woman in her 40s could be so capable. Two hours later, as the wall clock struck, Mi Jin had organized a thousand documents. Proofreading fell to the aide, who from noon until four in the afternoon still hadn't finished, finding not even a punctuation error. 
they knew they had to intensify their efforts. Near the end of the day, Geji Wong tasked Mi Jin with summarizing the year's accounting data for the team, emphasizing the use of Excel and assuming she wouldn't know how to use formulas. However, Mi Jin quickly analyzed the data using the MD function for text setup, then combining it with the find function for separation by codes, manufacturers, and quantities. Worried Giji Wong might not understand, she demonstrated on the spot. Their plan to oust her failed again, and she quickly completed the spreadsheet. To be safe, Mi Jin even made a program for the prosecutors to use, embarrassing the two men with her extraordinary skills. Now, Gaiji Wong and his aide were determined to force her resignation. At 6 p.m., as Mi Jin was about to revert to her younger form, the aide asked her to buy dinner for him and Gaiji Wong, specifying no takeout. Mi Jin quickly noted down their preferences and left. Excited, the aide and Gaiji Wong thought they were finally driving the lady away. However, clever Mi Jin had pre-ordered the meal for pickup, avoiding long lines and completing the task smoothly. On her way back, a handsome man saw the older Mi Jin and was about to greet her when a red light stopped him. By the time he caught up, the sun had set, and he was surprised to see she had transformed into a young woman. Unsure of her identity, he didn't continue to follow. The next day, Gie Ji Wong called Mi Jin to meet, but she claimed it was inconvenient. They decided to meet at a coffee shop that evening. What interesting story will unfold next?